Hello everyone, I'm, I'm Ted Gardner, and uh, I'm an interviewer for the Library of Congress Oral History Project, which is so capably handled here by our public library and our history department. Uh, Dennis Daly, historian, is uh, our videographer, and today we have the honor and the pleasure of speaking with Victor Shepard of Cincinnati. Uh, Victor, where were you born? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, Steel City. Steel City, <laughs> right. Uh, how, how about your family? Did you have brothers, sisters? Uh, yeah, so I had two brothers, two sisters. Uh, we moved to Akron, Ohio uh, after I was about two years old, something like that. We okay. lived there all of our life. I see. Yeah. So, uh, where did you go to elementary school? I went to Lawndale, which I'm sure you've heard of. <laughs> uh, then I went to Kenmore High School. In Akron. In Akron, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, now, uh, growing up, um, what year were you born? 1932. 32. Well, right in the depths of the terrible depression. Yep. And do you have any, of course, you know, maybe a few years more, but uh, the depression went on for so long. Mm -hmm. Do you have any particular memories about those early days? of your life, you know, as a boy uh, in school, playing sports or interests in anything particular? You know, I remember as a very young child, probably four or five, we lived in a junkyard, a house and by a junkyard, and I used to go out and play in the cars. No I kidding. thought that was great. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but I, uh, uh, I don't remember much about that. Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have a terrible memory on most things. <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to dig with you a little uh -oh. bit here and okay. see if we can get you. Because you know you're going to get a DVD of this uh, interview for your family, which Good. is very nice. And uh, you'll be on record forever after this one. So, um, uh, yeah, and Akron in those days, of course, was a very... Uh, a very vibrant uh, city with its rubber industry and everything, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yep, yep, yep. What did your father do? Uh, my father was in the Army. Oh. He was an engineer. Uh, he was in the Pacific. Uh, oh. My mother and father divorced when I was about five. My stepfather worked for the uh, Akron Transportation Company. Oh. If, uh, if the bus broke, he went out and fixed it. I see. And, uh, he worked there, uh, I guess, all of his working life. Yeah. Darn good, uh, darn good career. Yeah, I, I remember. Say. I remember seeing one of his uh, W-2 forms one year when I was a teenager, and he had five children that he had to feed, and he made something like twenty-four hundred dollars that year, wow. and that boggles my mind. I know. Doesn't yeah. It though? The whole year, we had a nice house, we had plenty to eat, sure. and everything. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I grew up in those early years too, and and I. Uh, I remember very, very vividly those days, the late 20s and the early 30s, and, and we didn't really uh, think that the, you know, poverty was a, a way of life at all. We had a very modest uh, existence, but uh, it was... You probably didn't know you were poor. No, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. No, we yeah. didn't. And uh, so... Uh, were you ever uh, in the Boy Scouts or anything oh, yes. like that? Yes, it was in the Boy Scouts. I think I was a, a junior scoutmaster, something like oh, that yeah, for a while. Oh, sure, junior yeah. assistant scoutmaster. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, thank you for your great service to that. that that's, that's a marvelous contribution. Um, <clears throat> high school, four years there at Kenmore, right? Mm -hmm. and uh, actually, uh, Three or three and a half, I quit school and joined the Navy. Oh, you did? Yes. Had you know, to get nobody special. said I was smart. Just, <laughs> uh, I see. Just lucky, huh? Yeah. Some, some, well, I don't even know about that. Yeah, no, I joined the Navy and uh, was going to go as an electronics technician. And they said, if you uh, go as a hospital corpsman, you can get out of here right away. And then when you get to San Diego, you can change over. Oh, sure. Famous. And lesson. I got to San Diego and the guy said, yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now we got you. We're yeah, going to do with you what we want. You're going to do what I tell you. <laughs> yes, sir. That's great. Well, now, uh, <clears throat> San Diego, you went to Boots in San yes, Diego? Sir. Okay. And uh, 
That was rather unusual to go from Ohio to San Diego for boots. Yeah, usually. I don't, I don't know why we didn't go to the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, they had closed that down or something like that, and uh, I'm not sure why, oh, but they I were see. now sending them out to San Diego. Yeah, right, and, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, the Great Lakes was where they usually went. Yes, yeah. that's right. San Diego was a nice place to go. Oh, that was a that was swell good. place to yeah. go. Wonderful climate there and everything. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as a, a young Midwesterner, of course, uh, Seeing the Pacific Ocean and everything, kind of a first time thing for you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. never been out there. Yeah. Uh, at, uh, at that time, about the only place I ever went to was uh, maybe down into West Virginia or over to Pittsburgh. How about that? So, you know, now we're all the way out in San Diego. Sure. Went yeah. out by train? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, which was enjoyable. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, in those days, it, it kind of took a long time to get out there, too. Of course, yeah. during the war, they, the troop trains, uh, they would sidetrack, you know, for, mm -hmm. for uh, special needs uh, transportation to get through. But um, so you, uh, you were there in San Diego. Did you go to any special training after Boots? Just hospital course call. And was that there in San that Diego? That was in San too? Diego, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. That's cool. Our, uh, the man that was in charge of the hospital corps school was one of the survivors of the Bataan Death March. How about My that? goodness yeah. sakes. Yeah, that's interesting. I should say, did you get any stories out no, of him? Not a one. Wouldn't I remember want somebody to... told me about that, and I often wondered about it. Yeah, you didn't want to talk about it. No. Goodness sakes. I'll be darned. Is he still alive? I doubt it. Yeah. Because that's been 9,000 years ago I or something know, like at that. At least. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He and Methuselah. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, that, that, must have, uh, that must have made an impression on you, though, because uh, by the time you were going through, there were, there were still a lot of veterans uh, of the war in, in, that, uh, in the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I had contact with some of those guys even even the early days anyway uh, there you are in San Diego then where were you sent uh, from there I went to the US Naval Hospital in Portsmouth Virginia clear back across clear the country. Back. when I left core school I had three choices yeah and I made three choices in California and they sent me to Virginia <laughs> No, wait a minute. No, that's not right. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Getting confused. Sure, you wanted to stay in uh, yeah. California. And they sent me to Portsmouth. Of course. Very that hot, very hot, very humid there. You should have been asked for Virginia, and they would have kept you in California. Well, I don't know. Where were you when I needed you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now, Corman training, uh, tell us about that. That's more than just first aid. I was probably an EMT in combat. That's, really? That's the best way I can explain it to somebody who doesn't know anything about a corpsman. Sure. A corpsman is short of being a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> one of our men did an emergency tracheotomy on a guy because he couldn't breathe. Is that he so? He had that training. And yeah. uh, uh, in the hospital, we would dispense drugs under the eye of the nurse, but she kept the drug key, mm -hmm. which was good because we probably would have taken the drugs. <laughs> Nowadays, we would have taken the drugs. I don't know about back then, yeah. really. Right. But uh, yeah, that, uh, if, uh, if you worked in x-ray, then you became an x-ray technician, and mm -hmm. if you worked in surgery, then you became basically a surgical nurse doing whatever. And, right. Uh, Did they have male nurses in those days, or were they all female? I don't know. It would have been an oddity, I think. I would think so, yeah. 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 It's quite common today, of course. Well, uh, how long were you there in, uh, in Corman training? Corman training was about three months, mm. as I remember. Mm -hmm. So I've you had a really good half year in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, I've never really thought about that, yeah. About a half All year. right, so now you're heading back uh, east across the the continent, so to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, of course you've never been to Portsmouth, Virginia. Nope. 
What was that like? A lot of bars. A lot of bars, yeah. Ferry trip across to Norfolk. Right. A lot of bars. <laughs> <laughs> right. And of course, the Navy had a big brig over there at Portsmouth, too. Well, I never saw that. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't know how. I missed it. <laughs> you didn't get that ribbon, huh? No. no. Well, that, was, that was good duty there. I, uh, I served in an officer's ward. I saved, I worked uh, in the kitchen of a pediatric ward. Hmm. And um, I worked in an ENT ward, eye, ear, nose, and throat. Oh, yeah. And, um, so it was good kind of rounded experience. Well, I should say, yeah. what, a, what, a great, uh, what a great training for life, you mm -hmm. might say, yeah. And uh, in Portsmouth, you were there for what, a year or what? Well, let me think. Um, probably pretty much short of a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really remember. Again, I've never really thought about it, how long I was there. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, the word came down one day that uh, they were asking for volunteers to go with the Marines in Korea because they needed corpsmen. Sure. So I put my name on the list. Good for you. And I don't know if I went because of that, but uh, mm -hmm. it was shortly mm -hmm. after that that I went. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was in 1950, and I joined in March of 1949. Mm -hmm. So you got that? You got that handsome uniform. So, uh, well, we didn't get the, uh, corpsmen don't wear the, the dress blues. Oh, they don't? No, no, they're not allowed to wear those. Okay. All I wore was fatigues. Oh, I yeah. don't see. Yeah. Okay. And mud. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> well, were you, did you feel uh, you were sent overseas? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And did you feel that your training for that, for battlefield, Duty was uh, adequate? No. Not well trained. How about that? Tell us about that. I re understand that I went from Portsmouth, Virginia to Camp Pendleton uh, in California and went with uh, item company and we trained, got ready, packed up and uh, a week or so later we left for Korea. Wow. Um, somewhere in there we had a lecture by somebody, I just vaguely remember it, on uh, what to do with combat wounds. And uh, about yeah. all I remember is you take a battle dressing and cover it up and send them back to sure. the aid station yeah. where they will really take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was re really first aid <clears throat> as such. Right. Immobilize the leg or whatever, if you sure. could find a leg. Sure. Um, but uh, a, uh, uh, somebody that, a corpsman that goes with the FMF, Fleet Marine Force, mm -hmm. takes the same training as the Marines do. And I didn't get that training, and I wish you I did. had. Yeah. So I got it along and along. Uh, you kind of. During the. You have learned it action. by yourself along yeah. the way. Mm -hmm. Experience only. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, that was a real test. But it was a, it was a good training. Yeah. 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 Now, you went across, uh, you embarked from. Pendleton, of course, and yeah, out San of San Diego, Diego or, mm -hmm. and uh, on a transport. USS Buckner, General Buckner. Oh, the General Buckner, yep. yeah, sure. Yep. Simon Bolivar Buckner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> killed, killed in Okinawa. Is that right? Yes, sir. I didn't know that. He was he was killed in the in the World War II uh, campaign of Okinawa. He was the first. He might have been the only starred officer killed uh, in the Pacific. I'm not sure about that. Is that right? Killed in battle. Yeah. Because he was, he, was, he was right up front all the time. He was a great, great, great leader. Well, so th there you were on the Buckner. Of, uh, was that, was that kind of like a Liberty ship or something, or how do you remember? It was just a troop transport ship, Okay. as I remember. The uh, bunks down below were oh, sure. something like three deep. <laughs> and, uh, you uh, uh, hoped that you got the bottom one, but you probably got the top one. Right, right. And uh, there was exercise on the deck. And uh, how did you deal with uh, with uh, sea duty? Uh, that is the motion of the ship and so forth. That, for some reason, that never bothered me, Good and I, I don't you. think it bothered too many of the guys. Uh, after you were out there for a while, the swells would be very gradual. Right. And, uh, 
So that yeah. wasn't bad. I think you get used to that pretty quickly. Got your sea legs. Yeah. As we came into Japan, I was in the mess hall eating, and they had these large tables with a little fence around it. And uh, you put your tray down there, and the, we could see through the porthole the shore. And the shore would come up, <laughs> and then it would go down. And as it did that, the trays would slide all over. Of so you had to hold it down. <laughs> and uh, that was, that was, that could have made everybody sick, but oh, I don't yeah. remember anybody being sick. Right. But that yeah. was pretty. About good. that. Yeah. Uh, were there, um, so now, did you go with a particular unit? This was I? Item, item Company. Item? Yeah, I joined Item Company in Camp Pendleton and okay. stayed with them throughout, oh, I you guess. Oh, did? Okay. Yeah. I'll be darned. Well, that was, that's interesting, too, that, uh, uh, so you had that real strong bond with Item Company. Oh, yes, yes. Tell us about that, your comradeship and so forth. Well, it, um, it develops over a period of time. Right. Uh, take a drink of water so I don't start crying. You know, okay. Uh, it's all right. We'll take I'm that. I'm with a reunion group of Item Company, and the bond has become very, very strong because we yes. see each other once a year. Uh, to make an indication of what that bond was, when we were in Camp Atsu in Japan getting ready to, to go make our landing, uh, we had some little guy who thought he was uh, uh, brother to Superman, a great wrestler and so forth, and then we had a tall, goofy guy that didn't like him very well, and he got wrestling one day. And the small guy was on, sitting on the floor like this with his arm up behind his back, and the big guy was pulling it up as hard as he could, and he was hurting the little guy. Yeah. Uh, the big guy was on his knees doing that. And everybody, most of the company was standing around, you know, saying, ah, oh, don't do that, and so forth. Yeah. And, uh, stupid me, I went over and I put my hands around his chin and put my knee in the back of his, uh, in his back, and I pulled as hard as I could and the made him guy. let go. Yeah. And he stood up, and he was ready to kill. Mm. And uh, so he says, no, no, don't touch the dock. And they all kind of closed in, and that mm -hmm. was the end of that. That's where the uh, camaraderie yeah, began absolutely. right there. And the respect for yeah. you and your, the position that you held, uh, your training. Imagine. Yeah. You betcha. Oh, I, I remember our, our corpsman aboard ship. I was on two different ships, and, and uh, they were outstanding men, outstanding. Well, um, <coughs> How long did it take you to get across to Japan? You remember? I think it took about two weeks. Mm -hmm. I would think so. Yeah. Did you stop in Pearl on the way over, or did no, you go no. direct? We just went directly went to direct. yeah. uh, to uh, Kobe, Japan. Kobe. And then by train to Camp Atsu. Mm -hmm. That was nifty. I'd never been in a foreign country, oh, and no. uh, we are in a train going down through the about Japanese, that? and that was really yeah. nifty. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get into Tokyo? No. Never no. got to Tokyo. No. We, um, once we got there, we were allowed to, uh, we, well, I don't know if we were allowed or not. We went out in the evening and walked in the village and mm -hmm. met the people and everything. Right. And uh, some of the big Japanese guys were very put out because uh, these little pipsqueak marines had kicked their butt in the, the yeah. previous war, yeah. you know, and uh, right. they didn't like that at all. Right. So pretty soon the word came down, stay out of town, stay mm -hmm. on base, you know? yeah. Yeah, no sense in stirring things up, yeah. right. Did you notice uh, in being in Japan, did you notice uh, war damage or anything like that? No, no, never did. That was pretty much the cities themselves, wasn't it? I think so, yeah, yeah. And we were, uh, we went through the country to get there. I don't remember anything about Atsu. Uh, when we left, we came, went, I mean, uh, to Kobe. When we left, we went back to Kobe and got aboard ship, but it was just a small town, as I remember. Right, The right. Camp Atsu was an army camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how long were you in Japan before you finally assaulted the Korean Peninsula? Probably about a week, a week or maybe a little less. 
Well, was there any particular preparation for that uh, before you made it across the water again? Uh, Did they say we're going into combat now, or you got to do this and do that? No, I don't remember that. Uh -huh. I, uh, uh, I was a, I was a stupid little boy. I didn't know what was going on anyway, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, somewhere along there, we did some night maneuvers. Oh, yes. And that was probably in Camp Pendleton before we left. Oh, I see. I don't remember doing any uh, 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 maneuvers or having, uh, doing anything like that while we were in Japan. Right. Uh, everybody got their, their weapons cleaned up and ready to fire sure, and so forth. Sure. And uh, we had a big beer bust the night before we left. Yeah. And, uh, Typical. We went down to the Army PX and bought beer, and a guy down there was flabbergasted at the amount of beer that we got. <laughs> and uh, I know I got I got pretty tipsy that night. I probably had two beers. Yeah, you know, right. And, uh, that was probably two beers more than I'd ever had. And I spent <laughs> the evening walking around the grinder trying to sober up. Right. And, uh, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then we then we uh, got on trucks and uh, did our thing. How about that? Yeah. Now, I noticed in your application there and uh, your experience, um, you went in in, in, uh, in Chosin? Uh, we were at the Chosin later on. We later went in, on? We went in at um, uh, Incheon. Oh, you went out yeah. oh, on Incheon. Yeah, September 15 at 15.30 hours. We, uh, right, 2.30 in the afternoon. Hit the, hit the beach. Yeah. And... Uh, um, hitting the beach was running the Amtrak up against an eight-foot seawall, putting the ladder on top of it and then climbing over and rolling onto the ground. There wasn't a beach, wow. was just a big eight-foot wow. seawall. And uh, we were supposed to be in the third wave to hit the beach. Uh, the naval guns were firing, the um, rocket ships were firing, there was a lot of smoke and confusion, and somehow or another we got we were the first boat to go in, among the first boats to hit the shore. Mm -hmm. But the um, resistance was light, as I remember. Mm -hmm. We hit a, uh, we were south of the city of Incheon, uh, south part of the city of Incheon, and it um, uh, seemed like it was a kind of a sparse industrial area. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't much of anybody there. We had some snipers and all, but that was all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, did you have air cover? Do you remember if you had air cover? Uh, we always had air cover. I don't remember it specifically mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's always fascinated me because I never, I, I didn't get into the Korea thing. But um, <clears throat> now this time of the year, uh, that was the summertime, wasn't it, when you were over there? September, when you first yeah, went in? fall. Yeah, yeah. OK. So you were there through the terrible winter and so forth. Yep. How yep. long were you in Korea? Uh, short of a year. Okay. Yep. All right. So you experienced a terrible winter there with snow and yeah, we were at the chosen when, mud uh, when it hit the fan and uh, temperatures were thirty to forty degrees below zero. Uh, oh my gosh! There were wind gusts up to fifty miles an hour, making a ninety degree below zero. Yep. Um, wind chill factor, and uh, that wasn't all over, you know, uh, usually it was fairly still, but I was on the side of a mountain there on the way up mm. where the wind was blowing very hard, and I have never been so cold in my life, yeah. and some poor guys were sitting there, uh, that was where they had dug in, dug in. Yeah. and um, uh, they tried to make a little fire, and uh, you know when you fan a fire, the embers fly out and the flame goes off to the side. Sure. Well, this was continuous. Yeah. I'm sure it just sucked the fuel right out of that fire. Oh, gosh. And uh, they were in their sleeping bags and uh, just ungodly cold yeah. and, uh, because of the wind. Of course. And uh, so we went down the hill about halfway and kicked holes in the snow, which was eight inches a uh, foot deep, something like that. And uh, Horrible conditions. threw our bags down and that's where we slept that night, yeah. Oh, God, that. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of equipment now, like your, your sleeping bag, for example, uh, in those days, of course, uh, 
you know, today we've got so much high-tech stuff that's been developed. And, uh, but in those days, a sleeping bag was, uh, was pretty heavy, wasn't it? Or pretty No, these were, these were made of duck feathers and duck down. Well, they were. As a matter of fact, in the Boy Scouts, I bought a uh, sleeping bag like that, you oh, know. Well. And uh, yeah. you could get in there and zero weather and start sweating. They were very yeah. good and they yeah. were very light because they were made of the down. Right. Right. Uh, have you uh, been to Washington to see the Korea Memorial? Nope. You haven't? Nope. Oh, I'll tell you. You talk about tearing up. I, I recommend you go. It, to me, the Korea Memorial is the most impressive of them all. Now, I know the Vietnam thing, the wall, and now <clears throat> the World War II Memorial, mm -hmm. which is very, very impressive and wonderful. But those figures that they, those life-size figures that they have in that memorial, Victor, you, you, you would just, uh, you'd, you'd crack up. I mean, it just I'll bet. affects you that way. Yeah. But I hope you get the opportunity to get over there and see that. Well, we've been, we're going to, we're going to have, a, uh, if I'm still going to reunions, then Good. we'll, uh, we want to have one somewhere around there. And uh, probably we may have it down in, um, um, can't think of the city, uh, south of Washington, D.C., and mm -hmm. Washington will be close enough that we can get up there sure. and see it, you know. Sure. Then there's a, there's a marine museum oh. at... Lejeune? No, uh, not that far south. Oh, and, um, I know what you mean. Well, I wish I knew what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, they just opened it up, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah, that yeah. hasn't been open very long. I no. understand. I haven't seen that. I understand that's... And there's another wonderful one down at Paris Island, a marine museum. If you ever get down to Beaufort, South we, Carolina. We had a uh, reunion there not long ago, and we went... Did we go through the museum? We went to a museum down there. I don't know if it's the Marine Museum that you're speaking. Well, there's of. one on on the base there in uh, at Paris well, Island. We may have seen that. Then. Yeah, it's a nice one too. Yeah. Well, now let's go back. Let's go back to Korea. Your your experience. Uh, tell us about some of your experiences with wounded and that sort of thing. Well, let's uh, let's start walking down the beach at Incheon. Okay. We had to be at our objective by uh, 2,800 hours that night, and uh, which we made very easily. And as we were marching down the road, uh, um, we had uh, refugees coming by, and a lot mm. of them wounded. And uh, of course, I started treating them. And, uh, then I had to stop treating them because um, we needed the bandages for our own men. We were going into combat, you know, so that sure. was uh, kind of a, a dumb thing. <laughs> but uh, um, what can I say? One day uh, I, uh, I can remember being on the side of a hill with our company way down in the valley, and I was treating a guy. There were two men there, and I treated the one. He had passed out or something. And I could never remember why I was there. I remember being there because as they left, a mortar hit behind us and knocked me down oh and peppered the one guy with, it looked like he had gotten shot by buckshot or something all down his back. Oh. And he wasn't really hurt bad. He just had yeah. all this little stuff peppered on. Yeah. But I couldn't remember why I was there. Huh. And a couple of years ago, I got up uh, answering the call of nature about three in the morning, and as I got out of bed, I remembered why I was there. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? How about that? Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> what a triggering and, uh, that was. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, 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 well, I have a comment I could make, but I'll not do so. Right. Well, that's up to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I had gotten, somebody had called down that there was a guy up there that passed out probably with heat prostration. And yeah. so I ran up to see what the problem was, and that's why I was there. Sure. And uh, sure. he wasn't bad. He was just tired, and it was yeah. hot, and so yeah. forth. Now, but, uh, you had, at that time, of course, you had, were you still using sulfur? Yeah, wounds? I carried sulfur powder with me. Yeah. And what else did you have to treat uh, wounds and so forth? Uh, uh, that's almost it. 
Uh, we had battle dressings. We had big ones and medium-sized mm -hmm. ones and small ones. Mm -hmm. uh, tape and gauze. I had uh, uh, suture scissors. Uh, I had a scalpel. I had a bottle of copper sulfate. I have no idea how I got that, but I used it at the Chosen. I'll tell you about that later. Okay. Uh, I had a, a box of morphine surettes. Aspirin? I'm sorry? Aspirin? Did you have aspirin? I mean, they I used don't, that I, I don't aspirin remember for that. everything. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, take two and call me in the morning. Yeah, well, what well, if they called me in the middle of the night, you know, Corman, I'd say take two <laughs> aspirins and I'll see you next June. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, I don't remember that. Uh, my medical kit was rather sparse, and uh, um, I was there to render first aid to the guys, get the bleeding to stop, uh, immobilize, and so forth, and then get them back to the aid station as soon as possible where they could take care of things. Sure. And then from there, they would go to, the, to one of the marine hospitals and right. uh, be, get operated on and, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, of course, you had a helmet, yeah. battle helmet. Yeah, helmet, web belt, leggings. I liked those leggings. We had to get rid of them, and I hated to get rid of them because they just felt good when you were walking. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, <clears throat> I carried a carbine. Oh, you did? And uh -huh. I could use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and did. Mm -hmm. um, have you been trained in breaking it down and putting it back together no, again? No, no. Didn't no, have to do no. that. No, when I got the carbine, it was thick with uh, cosmoline and uh, right. a, a, a greasy substance. Jelly. Wrapped in uh, brown paper wrapping. Yeah. And uh, I cleaned it off, and then a Marine came over and stripped it for me and showed me how to oh, clean yeah. it and so forth. But sure. I would never remember. I had no reason to, yeah, right. to do that. Did you ever fire it? Many times. Many times? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be darned. If, um, you know, corpsmen are non combatants. But you and I know that, yeah. but nobody else knows that. Right. And when the enemy's coming across the line, they don't stop and say, are you a corpsman? Yeah. And you say, yeah, it's all Oh, yeah, we don't shoot people. you. Get back. We don't shoot corpsmen. They just shoot them. Oh, baloney. Uh -huh. In fact, a uh, corpsman has a life expectancy of something like 15 minutes on a, a landing because those are the guys to kill because that screws everything up. Sure. So, uh, yes, I was never in a position where um, we were overrun or anything like that, but mm -hmm. at the Chosen, uh, uh, we fired a illumination shell, uh, illumination shell, and when it burst, there before us were hundreds of gray-yellow suits walking slowly towards us. And uh, in the morning, the field was just covered with lumps of dead bodies. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, I was with a mortar platoon, yeah. and they were firing as hard as they could, sure. and then we were in the background shooting with our guns. Right. I don't know why we weren't overrun. Isn't that something? Yeah. My God, they came that close. Our uh, com commanding officer, Bull Fisher, uh, called him the Bull for a good reason. <laughs> good man. He got a Navy Cross for the job that he did at mm -hmm. the Chosen. Yeah. He was mean and nasty. Mm -hmm. and, uh, strung up wire, put hand grenades with the pins out on the wire, put set cans of gasoline below it, and he hit the wire, and it would blow up and would not only kill a bunch of people, but it would light the area up so sure. that you could see the, the bad sure. guys. And, uh, oh, boy. Just all kinds of good stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, well, I, I, I recognize the name, and, <clears throat> of course, Navy Cross being the second highest medal uh, awarded. That, that, is, uh, that is a tremendous thing. Um, you weren't wounded, though, or no, were you? No. You didn't get the Purple Heart? Got a little, no, I didn't get the Purple Heart. Yeah, right, right, right. But there you were. I mean, you were certainly lucky. Very, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Very lucky. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was with the mortar platoon. Uh, guys on the front line were the ones that were in the most danger. Yeah. The mortar platoon was usually about 20 yards behind, firing right. over their heads. Sure. And that mortar, that was a... That was a destructive weapon. That's a son of a gun. Yeah, even if it didn't go off it, if it hit you on the head, that would hurt. Oh, boy, yeah. I'll say. I should say. Well, <clears throat> so did you, um, 
uh, and of course the mortar men who were firing that weapon and so forth, loud explosion. Uh, did you suffer any loss of hearing or anything like that? No, no, no. The, um, we, were, we had 60 millimeter mortars. The uh, 80s and 4.2s were much louder, especially the 4.2 mortars. The 80 millimeter mortars was like a muffled shotgun going off. Wow. So it wasn't really that bad. And, which was basically is what it was, a shotgun shell in the bottom of the mortar. And yeah. it would come down and hit a pin and yeah. blow up Boy. and shoot the mortar out. Wow. wow. Yeah. Goodness sakes. At the, uh, at the Chosen, and I, I don't mean to keep referring back to that. Uh, but please that's do. The most we need outstanding more of thing. Uh, when they attacked one night, they were firing the mortars so very, very fast and heavy that we had to keep reminding the guys to slow down a little bit because they might drop a mortar shell in on a shell before it had come out. Sure. And the tubes were beginning to glow red. Mm. They were a dark red, and uh, this is bad. And uh, they would take snow and kind of sprinkle it over the tube a little bit to, to cool it down a little bit and very slowly. For and that seemed sake. to work well and cooled it down. Otherwise, oh. the tube could have distorted, and God knows what would happen. Right. Yeah. That's fascinating. That's, That's something fascinating. Else. Yeah. How long was that tube? About two feet. Huh? Yeah, two or um, uh, yeah, two two and a half feet, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and it's about that big around. Boy, that's a big shell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, this is this is just fascinating, Victor, to hear you tell your personal experiences <laughs> and your feelings, and 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 that's what we hope to hear from you about your mm -hmm. not only your being there, but here I am, Victor Shepard, and I'm just a young kid from Akron, Ohio, and what am I doing over here? Did you have a lot of that? <laughs> I never did find out what I was doing over there. I kept really? volunteering for things. It was really <laughs> stupid, you know. No, but, uh, I know. Well, God bless you. Look what you survived and you did so many Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at, at 18, you're Superman. It well, of course, nothing happens, can happen. You know? to yeah, you. look at this, boy. Attaboy. Yeah. 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 I know that that was that was an amazing time. Uh, have you had people ask you about uh, you know? It must have been a horrible, horrible experience, uh, part of your life. Uh, how did how did you feel about that time that you overall did you do you think you missed two years of your life by being in the Marines? No. As a matter of fact, when my tour of duty was in the FMF was over, I went back to the Navy. And uh, when I look back now, I wondered why I didn't stay with the Marines because it was so much more organized and everything. It was uh, kind of wimpy getting back into the Navy, especially at a, a, a dispensary where I, oh, where I was stationed I then because of doctors and everybody just you know, yeah. wimping around, yeah. and the Marines were like that. Yeah, very, very yeah. disciplined and sharp. And when I came back from Korea, we came into Treasure Island mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and I immediately turned the Korean War off in my mind and never thought about it until a few years ago when I heard uh, that uh, my item company was having a reunion and uh, there's a, organization called the Chosen Few that I could get into because these are people who served at the Chosen sure. Reservoir. So I began to think about it and everything I'm telling you now are things that I've managed to remember Good that for I you. had forgotten about. Good for you. Yeah. That, that's, that's wonderful. And that's what's so important about this interview, Victor, about you. Absolutely. Get this story out because when we're gone, <clears throat> If we haven't told about it or been interviewed, you know, uh, nobody's going to know. No, it's gone. It's, yeah. it's very, very important. Now, you know, it's always fascinated me about the Chosen re uh, Reservoir. What was that? What was it? Was it a water reservoir? Yeah, it was a uh, East Fork type thing. Okay. Uh, a, um, it was about halfway between Wonsan and the Yalu River. 
hmm. uh, on a straight line. It was on a high plateau. When we got there, we went by truck uh, down these roads, and then we started uh, through farm country and all, and then we started up to winding roads, just big enough for a truck. And as we went up, uh, it got a degree cooler for every mile we went or some such foolishness like that. So mm -hmm. when we got up to the top, it was very, very cold and very snowy. And <clears throat> we had to, um, then we went on through Coterie, where the headquarters for the Marines were, or was, and uh, then we went on to Hagaruri, hmm. and uh, then elements of the Marines moved through up to a place called Udamni, and uh, they had a hard time up there, hmm. because when the Chinese came in and surrounded us, uh, they were surrounded. But they were a little, we were a big group like this around it, but they were a little group like that in this little town. <clears throat> and uh, they had to fight their way back, something like 17 miles, to get back to us. Wow. And some kind of uh, safety. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting dry. Well, take your time. <clears throat> we're, we're but just... uh, the Chosen was a big lake, source of uh, water and also power through a power station oh, yeah, at uh, Fuchillan Valley, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was very important to, to keep that all open. And uh, there, uh, there was a airfield in great disrespect, disrepair. Mm -hmm. uh, the engineers came in and worked day and night uh, floodlights and everything at night, uh, getting it repaired wow. uh, under gunfire because they were always being shot, shot at. Oh, yeah. And um, I don't know the exact statistics, but we were something like 15,000 men surrounded by 300,000 Chinese. And Good. we were totally surrounded. I mean, there weren't some guys over there and some guys over there. Was there was no, guys all there around. There was no way out. Yeah, <laughs> and so we had to walk back and they probably let us go back. I'll be yeah, darned. Far away. And then as we walked back, the planes came in, the Corsairs, oh, yes. dropping the napalm and the rockets. Right. Lovely thing to see. Oh, boy. And that Corsair, what, a, what an aircraft. Yep, absolutely. Oh, wonderful yep. aircraft. Rugged and fast and strong, mm -hmm. I should say. Well, of course, you know, we've read about um, people like uh, the former great Hall of Fame baseballer Ted Williams. He flew. I think he flew Corsairs. He was he was a Marine pilot and uh, John Glenn and John Glenn. Yeah. And you know we've got a Corsair out at our Warbird Museum out in Claremont County Airport that we've re restoring to flyability out there. Why don't people tell me these things? Is that right? Well now at the airport. Yep. I'll be done. Do you know about our Tri-State Warbird Museum? No, never heard about never it. Heard of it. Never well, heard of it. Well, that comes later. I'll get you stuff about that. All right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, being there in, in Korea, now, were you above the 38th? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, you, were, you were up up north. Oh, yeah, we were about 60, pretty close 60 to where miles you, from the Yellow where River. it comes out from China. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah. And that's where those Chinese stormed across. Yeah, they just came across in waves. MacArthur said they wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah. But he didn't know what he was talking about. Well, of course not. He was Army. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, what can I say? <laughs> what can we say? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you and I are on course, both on the I should interject here that if uh, an Army guy and a Marine were in a bar drinking, they would be fighting. But oh, if somebody sure. came in and took one of them on, they would both fight that guy. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's always competition between the oh, services. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but they deserve it. <laughs> well, you know, and you're bringing it out so so clearly and, and so wonderfully. Uh, the esprit de corps of the Marines is mm -hmm. just, uh, you're inculcated with that the moment you set your foot in boot camp, aren't you? They start throwing it at you. Yep, they do. They do, yeah. We Did you have a tough uh, drill sergeant and so forth? No, I didn't go through the Marine boots. I went through yeah. Navy boots. Oh, you went through Navy boots? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's uh, right. We, that's we had a chief who was a tough little booger. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, uh, I did too. He might come in staggering one night. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, for God's sake, don't go out and start a fight. 
But if a fight starts, hit the guy first. Yeah, right. Which was good information. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so words to live by. Well, which, uh, you know, who knows, might have uh, done you good several times through your life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I've never been in a fight that I can remember, except when I was a little kid, and that doesn't count. Right. Uh, you know, but, um, well, going back to Korea, and, and we need to know everything we can from you, Victor, about this, because you have had and you have experienced something uh, that so few people in the world have done, uh, not only as being in combat, but treating the wounded and everything. You were an angel of mercy, and they, they, they depended upon a person like you. And uh, you felt that responsibility, of course. Nobody's ever described me as an angel of mercy. <laughs> They're usually son of a bitch is in there somewhere, you yeah, know, right. talking yeah. about me. Yeah, well, you know, uh, everybody did their job. Our job was taking care of the wounded, Absolutely. and uh, you don't think about it. And right. Somebody else, Corman, and you run over there and right. see what his problem is. Yeah. And, uh, well, I, I've always had the greatest respect for, for our Corman uh, on board ship because uh, knowing how to treat the wounded and everything. Um, so let's see. Now, you meet Corporal. We're, we're, Hospital we're, Corman, third class. Third class. Yeah, which is the equivalent of a buck sergeant. Right. Okay. Right. Very good. And um, with the uh, with the coming on of winter there, where you were, uh, and being in that that <clears throat> rugged, terrible, rugged country, um, what uh, what were you preparing for? What were you preparing your mind for? Your your spirit? Your resolution and so forth. Did you think, you know, terrible things were coming and that sort of thing? As we drove up towards Hagaru in the truck, I had, uh, I had a very bad feeling of foreboding. I can remember that. And yeah. uh, uh, that we got there and then you got busy and it went away and we were trying to set up tents and pound sure. tent stakes into the ground that was hard as a rock. Sure. and. Uh, the mortar bases put that in the ground because they have to be stable, but we right. couldn't get them in the ground because the ground was frozen. Frozen. Oh my god. And gosh. we were pretty much busy all the time. We didn't have time to think of philosophical things or what yeah. we're going to do or yeah. whatever. And uh, sure, self-preservation. Yeah. How am I going to get? How no. am I going to eat when everything's frozen? And you yeah. put the food in here and keep right. it for a while to warm right. it up. Yeah. What about mail? What about getting letters from home and that sort of thing? There is no such thing as getting too much mail from home. That's right. At, uh, I would go for very long periods without ever hearing from anybody. So yes. when I got a letter, I was really very happy to get it. Oh, sure. And uh, I would get, my, my stepdad sent me something. I don't remember what it was. It was a cake or something like that. And uh, for packing material, he used popcorn. Mm -hmm. Think about it, that would be a good packing material. Real popcorn. And it was good popcorn. I hope it, it was, was a little, or, little stale. <laughs> I hope it was Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, my God. <laughs> How about that? Isn't yeah, that something? Yeah. So you could eat the popcorn, although it was stale, huh? Yeah, who cares? You know, yeah, popcorn, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, Well, now you had, um, I, we're, we're talking about uh, the early 50s. So uh, you had uh, V-mail. Do you remember V-mail? I remember V-mail. We, I don't remember us having V-mail. That was more World War II. That was wasn't really it? World War II. Yeah. So I wondered uh, if there had been a development, you know, uh, along uh, during the Korean War that communications was any better or probably just no, as I, bad as it was. I don't remember anything on that line. Uh, they'd call mail call and I start throwing out letters to the guys sure. that got one and their sure. packages and that was it. I don't Absolutely. I, I don't remember any censoring or anything. Yeah. And uh, we knew where we were and they knew where we were so well, of course. We didn't need any censoring. And did it ever bother you that it, it wasn't a so-called declared war or 
that sort of thing. Never thought about it. Never thought about it. Yeah. There again, it's, it's what you had to do and what you were up against. Yeah, well, that's, that's all semantics or something. Sure. That, uh, that when, you're, when you're getting shot at and shooting at somebody, it doesn't matter if, <coughs> if anybody's mad about it or yeah. has made a yeah. declaration. Well, I know at the time, uh, we stateside were furious with, uh, with the United Nations and so forth. Did you have any experience with United Nations uh, uh, troops? From other countries? Uh, in, uh, at the Chosen, we had the 41 Commandos. 41 Commandos are absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, when they charge, uh, you better get the hell out of there. Yeah. Uh, tough guys. And uh, the Turks are even worse. And uh, the word being that they would sit there all day sharpening their knives. Yeah. And uh, they, wow. loved, they loved to, uh, to attack, to bayonet attacks. Wow. And uh, the Koreans didn't like that. No. And when the Turks came running up a hill, they turned around and ran down the hill. Is that so? They were nasty. They were fierce. Were they? It's a good thing they didn't have those big curved blades. Wow. Then I would have run. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You, you know. get hurt with one of those things. Oh, horrible. Yes. Horrible. But um, we, I don't remember ever coming into contact with any of them. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were plenty of nations over there, not very many people, but there were yeah. plenty of people. We just didn't happen to be in the spot. Right, I understand. Yeah. Uh, did you have any contact with the Army? I've uh, yelled a number well, of insults. Well, you mentioned the Army that, engineers. Uh, uh, yeah, and the Marine engineers, the CBs uh, Marine or whatever. Engineers. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah. as we were leaving Hagaru, we walked. It was 70 or 90 miles, something like that. Walked to Coterie, and then from there we walked down that long mountain thing and got down to the bottom of the plateau, and then there was probably 20 or 30 miles to go through these canyons and all, and there were men, uh, there, were, there were deep valleys that we were in, high ridges, and sure. I can remember seeing men up there firing their weapons at somebody on the other side, keeping it open for us to go through. Hmm. And I was told at the time that it was the Army had, it was, it was up there doing that. And uh, I had been told since that no, it wasn't, it was the Marines. So I don't know who it was, because we were the guys that were coming out. Gee. But, um, yeah. How long were you up there on the front lines? I guess about a week, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. More than enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about the landing at Wonsan. Oh, yeah, please. After Incheon, we went around to a little town called Maison near Pusan, rested, got ready, and went to Wonsan where we were going to make a landing. Cut them off in the background. Mm -hmm. um, we got on our LSTs and we're cruising up there, and we didn't go in to make the landing. We just kept cruising back and forth up and down the coastline of Korea and we didn't know why. Uh, then it came down that the harbor was filled with uh, scully spiked mines, the round mines with the little spikes on them. Ooh. And it was filled with those and we couldn't get in there, couldn't make the landing. And uh, I have since done a little article on about this so I, I'm a little familiar with it. Right. Uh, the Navy got in there and they got the UDT men in there to uh, clean oh. some of those mines out and they got a minesweeper in there finally and they cleared a path hmm. and the next day we were going to make a landing but during the night some wooden boats came out and laid more mines. Oh my goodness. And uh, <laughs> so the Navy blew them out of the water yeah. and went back in and cleared the mines out hmm. and then we made our landing. But by then the South Koreans had come up and taken the city. So all we did was get off the boat and uh, walk by, uh, walk ashore. Walk into town. Yeah, but it would have it would have been pretty pretty bad. Yes. Had that not happened, because uh, it was like uh, the beach in Florida. There was a long sandy beach, and then there were some sand dunes, and then mm -hmm. some, some trees, and right. it would have been uh, a duck shoot, you know, oh with my, all the guys would trying have been to, to land and ducks all. out there. Yeah, yeah. I should say. But that was our landing at Wonsan. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's interesting, and of course, for those who don't know what UDT means, Underwater Demolition Team, 
which eventually became what we know yeah. today as the SEALs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, so you, you, you know, you were there in, in a period of, of uh, transitional warfare as well. That's interesting. Convene. How about Convene. that? Yeah. Um, so when you got your orders to, to come out, then what happened? What transpired? Uh, if you couldn't carry it, you burned it or shot it or blew it up or something like that. Or left it. And yeah. uh, we had a huge ammunition dump. And as we were coming by, there was a large stone bridge over a dry creek. Uh, and there were uh, trucks lined up along it. And we were on this side of the trucks marching out when they blew up the ammunition dump and it knocked everybody to their knees. That's oh, the, the concussion, concussion was that great. But that was really something. Boy. It looked like an atom bomb had gone up yeah. there, you know, with the smoke going up and everything. And uh, <clears throat> if they had to leave a um, piece of artillery, they would throw a thermite grade grenade down there to ruin the gun so it could never be used again. Sure. And uh, I don't know if they ever did anything to the airfield or not. Hmm. I would have plowed it up. <laughs> but, uh, and then we left and uh, Graves registration started picking up the bodies because all the way back there were bodies laying all over the road. Guys that had, had fought the enemy who had us surrounded to open a corridor for us to get out. Good heavens. <coughs> that Excuse was, me. And, um, that must have been a heartbreaking sight. Yeah, that was, that was. I, uh, uh, I was going to say they were army guys. They, uh, uh, I'm not sure if they were or not. Uh, seems like there was army trucks, but then that could have just been that we were using them. But there was equipment laying around on its side or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have pictures at home of, uh, of that. Wow. Yeah. Are you? Um, is your outfit still having uh, reunions? We're having one in Dayton next May. I'm going to be the host of the oh, reunion. Yeah. Wonderful. This is the high point of the year, yeah. for me anyway, you know, and sure. for a lot of the men it is. Sure. And we have about 25 of the men who are at every reunion, and then different ones come mm -hmm. to one, two, or three reunions, yeah. It's a good time. You sit around, drink beer, and lie oh, to each yeah. other. Oh, yeah, tell wild stories oh, and, yeah. uh, and all that kind of stuff. Well, I've been to a number of <laughs> myself. And uh, will that be at Wright Pat up there at the Air Force Museum? Uh, we'll have it at the Holiday Inn North okay. on Wagner Ford. And uh, one day we'll be, we will spend at uh, the museum there. Right, right. Yeah, I've made arrangements with uh, right. a young lady there. Well, that's wonderful because uh, that, that is such a, a, a great traditional place and, and uh, you know, for people to learn about early aviation and everything else. But the important thing is that you, you guys get together and get to jaw back and forth and yep. Yep. slap each other on the back and hug and all yeah. that good stuff. And we've got new guys coming in who had never been there before, so it's oh, kind of new good. blood, you know, guys that's that uh, maybe you hadn't wonderful. seen before. And right. So forth, yeah. Well, now tell us uh, what, what's going on in your life today in Cincinnati. What, uh, you've Not been retired for, from what? Uh, in 1984, we were in Germany and we had a car wreck and that uh, crippled my leg. Oh, and, uh, gee. Uh, up till that time, I was working for Whitco Chemical Company. I was a salesman. Oh, and, yes. Uh, I had, uh, uh, I was a technical sales representative, had uh, something like 33 eastern states that I had distributors and so Terrific. forth. Uh, <clears> Terrific. <throat> that ruined that. Yes. And, uh, Went back to school and got some computer knowledge and I uh, just kind of played with computers. Uh, at one time I did pre-press layout for all the printers in our area using my little computer. Mm -hmm. And everybody got computers and they did their own. Sure. So I had a little computer design company that I had, uh, not much of a company. <laughs> And about uh, 12 years ago, my accountant said, uh, why don't you retire? You can make more re money retired than you can, you know, dicking around here. <laughs> sure. So I did, and I did. Good and, for you. Good so, for you. And my wife had retired about the same time. So oh, that's uh, wonderful. It worked out well. I know. How long have you two been married? 51 years. Wonderful. Congratulations. 51? It was that's 50 great. years in April. Great. Yep. And Lois is here with you to hear your, your mm -hmm. wonderful story. 
Well, that's, uh, we're, we're running short on time now, Victor, but uh, um, you have a family besides your wife? I have a daughter by previous marriage. She lives in Florida. I see. Okay. And uh, you get down to Florida to see her once in a while? Uh, once in a while. Yeah. She's coming up for the reunion. Oh, good. Oh, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, we've been tremendously honored to have the opportunity to speak to Victor Shepard. And uh, I'm pleased we thank that, you. Uh, you are. Uh, you know, you hear people say, well, thanks for your service. Yeah, okay. But uh, we, we mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're speaking here today on DVD. Uh, there'll be a copy in the Library of Congress in Washington of it and a copy at our public library here. So your history now, pal, and uh, anybody can eventually tap in and learn all about Victor Shepard. Me and Attila Hun. You bet. Absolutely. Well, we thank you so very much. Hey, God bless. And, thank uh, you for Thank talking. you again for everything. Yes, sir. And we're, we're just honored Pleasure. to make your, make your acquaintance. And that wraps it up.